Welcome back to another episode here on the subscriber server and we are gonna go over all the things that happen in between episodes starting now. Okay, so the first thing I have done is I have finished the surrounding landscape around my starter base. I decorated using some spruce leaves and some flowers. I even made this nice uh, dark pathway around here. And I think it looks pretty sweet. So I have done that. I've also gotten a netherite helmet and a netherite sword. Along with that, obviously, I maxed out all my gear because we got Ender Ender. Uh, and that means that I can essentially get all the books that I need and enchant everything to the max level so that's good now that I've got all of my gear ready and set up I think we should do a little bit of end busting that way we can set up our end <laughs> I'm back from the end raid and I immediately set up my ender chest so we can take a good look at it first but before we take a look at it we need to look at our spoils we got shulker shells probably enough for the season I don't know we got extra lystra here we got some very cool hats and swords uh, too but most importantly we got enough shulker boxes to set up our ender chest. So I'm going to briefly go over how I do my ender chest. We start off with anything that is iron related just goes into this uh, ferrous crate or ferrous. I don't know how to say this properly, but it refers to iron. Brief interruption here from Fenagon. The way you say this word is ferrous, not whatever garbage nonsense I was saying. I also have a mini fridge which has all my food and potions. After that we got a safety deposit box where I put all my rich teas and miscellaneous ores that I might have mined like gold and lapis which I can't make their own shulker box because I don't have enough and they don't have separate items. I also have a stone box for impromptu rocks or any type of building in general that's impromptu. I also have a rocket box, a 
which is quite empty. I need to make a gunpowder farm and a sugarcane farm. I have two shipment boxes which I use to carry materials uh, that are raw, maybe goods from farms to places. They're just useful to have. I have a coal shulker box, which is dedicated just to coal. I usually have a lot more coal, but this season I'm having a hard time finding coal. But I did get four deep slate coal ore, which is one of the rarest ores, I think, of 1.18. So if any one of you need it, just call me up. Uh, not call me up, but DM me on Discord. I have a redstone box, which should have more actual components, but it's the start of the season. I have a TNT box, which is surprisingly empty because I use the TNT to mine for netherite. And I have a copper box. Uh, the reason why I give copper their own box is because copper is a uh, ore that's easier to uh, harvest and get a lot more of. And there's also some blocks associated to it, like lightning rods. I have a totem box, which I use uh, purely for totems. And the reason why it's Shipwreck Phoenix 27 is because he is a former member of Gubscriber who runs the First Craft SMP. And this is his skin. And I drew it myself. And I think it's just pretty cool that we have him here uh, in my offhand all the time. He saves me from dying, so pretty cool shipwreck. Then I have the greatest arrows ever forged, which would be spectral arrows, which I have none of because I didn't set up a piglin trading station. Then I have my terraforming box, which I use all the time. And I have a log box, which is missing dark oak because I haven't found that wood. And then I finally have my suitcase where I carry spare picks, spare shovels, spare gear, backup gear, spare elytra, all those type of things associated with gear and backup. Then I have my diamonds at the very bottom. Any player heads? I killed Dayton during the dragon fight by accident and Jesus returned it back to me. So thank you, Jesus. Uh, for helping me collect these heads that I accidentally killed. Um, so sorry, Dayton, if you're watching this video. Sorry. Sorry for killing you. Anyways, uh, we have finally Ender Chest, which I probably should have a stack of, but it's early in the season. And obviously, this now if you're observant enough, you would have noticed that this box, this box, and this box all have something in common. They're all almost all formatted. That's the exception of the log uh, box, which is not formatted in a certain style. And the reason why it's formatted like this, where we have uh, all these logs in a certain array and a certain formation. But more importantly, the reason why we have just one of these uh, spruce logs here instead of just 26 logs in this slot is because I am and I have adapted ethos, ender chest, storage concept idea thingamabob that he uses in his let's play and on hermitcraft. So the idea is that you have shulker boxes that are formatted and you use them like normal shulker boxes but when you need materials and whenever you're gonna run through a slot of materials you never take the last block. You always keep one block at least in the slot. That way, let's say once you have used these, uh, once you have used these blocks, you can essentially take it back to your base or wherever you have this contraption set up, where you have five hoppers pointing into a, a, a potential shulker box, and you have chests above it to uh, store certain materials. So in this case, we're gonna go over to this one because this one stores the sticks that we might want to refill in this box. And the spruce logs that we might want to refill. You place it in on top of that hopper and it starts filling up. Obviously this is a bad example because it's not formatted correctly. This is the reason why you can't have empty spaces. I would have dark oak logs here but I don't have any dark oak logs. So 
this is the reason why you need to keep uh, one slot everywhere and there can't be any air spaces. Not only that, but you can have a second chocolate box, exactly the same like this, but you can always keep it at your base. That way, let's say this is almost completely empty, I can just switch out the one right here that is most likely full and switch it back to my ender chest and then take the one from my ender chest that is almost used up and put it back here to refill it. And that's how this concept goes and obviously uh, I did not come with it, come up with this. It's all by Ito and um, I, I have adapted it because it's a really, really good idea. Um, so, so far I only have three of these boxes formatted. But I plan to have a fourth one, most likely terracotta over here, but this one is for stone, this one is for woods, this one is for the terraforming, and the way I get up there to refill the chest on top of those hoppers is through this smart elevator. Now you may have seen this on uh, other contraptions and other farms, but this is normally, from my experience, normally used on gold farms, uh, especially those that are on top of the nether roof. People would click on the hop on the on the minecart, and they would just keep on clicking on minecarts to get all the way up to the top. And it's a simple trapdoor escape, so this is pretty fast. And I think it's a pretty cool design that I came up with. And so these are all the chests that we can just uh, stockpile all our bulk and the stone and the site, put all our and the site here, put all our stone here, stuff like that. It's a bit hard to reach the back chest, but it's possible, just like that. And so that is my ender chest setup, and also concepts that I will be using for the season. And obviously, I said that I want to add another one of these formatted boxes, most likely terracotta, we'll see, maybe nether themed, I'm not sure, but uh, leave your suggestions down below. Also, I cannot forget to mention that this week, we hit a hundred subscribers, and I think we went over, like, we're at 102 or 103 now, but that is amazing. Thanks for all the support, guys. Uh, I mean, like, I've been trying to get to, like, a hundred subscribers since forever, and it is crazy that i finally been able to make, reach this milestone, and we'll definitely, um, have a little bit of a celebration, uh, on stream this saturday which is actually probably over by the time you're watching this video but we will probably have a very fun time and i might have a give so i don't know i got some i got some xbox game passes that i really don't need now for the greatest announcement of all last episode i said uh, i will be doing something very special during this episode but unfortunately, that is going to be delayed because I want to make sure that this plan is perfect and I still have quite a bit of planning to do. So maybe next episode we'll be able to finish off planning. Um, currently, I'm doing a lot of planning, designing, building, and creative uh, for this entire season in general when it comes to shops, bases. So there's not much to show, but we can go over to a new community district slash build area that Bowie is in charge of. First we need to go down East Tunnel, then make a right from Steep, and we're here. This place is Bowie's city project area where he plans to have a bunch of builders, or anyone in general, come help out, clear land, and ultimately build a city. Uh, a modern one. I'm not sure though what he, his exact plans are, but he has chosen a jungle area. So jungles are very dense and are full of wooden leaves. So we have been clearing out a lot of leaves and logs these days. I even did a bit of clearing on a live stream this week, which was very cool hanging out with everyone. 
Okay, and we cleared the area right here behind us. So I also want to help build and clear land too, um, some more. So I am going to just go put play some music and just help. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh, oh I almost fell into. Oh my god! Look at that. I almost fell into the lava pool while speaking. Oh, oh, no, 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 okay, okay. Like I was saying, I want to help out too, so I'm going to continue uh, deforesting this area, but in the meantime, I'm going to play the first time lapse of this season. I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. The first one of the season. Hopefully my time lapse will get better over the course of the season. But um we have also done a lot more digging while that time lapse was rendering away. And while I was editing, I was also chopping down a bunch of trees. So this general area right here is the area I cut down. Wow, there's actually a couple more leaves and such falling down here um but we have cut down just now around about starting where these melons are at all the way over to here which is a lot and that was a little over an hour so you can see how cutting trees especially in the jungle is very very time consuming i would bet that like this chunk of area here would take me like another one and a half hours maybe one hour and 45 minutes but that's not the point i got a bunch of materials from this run as you can see i've got in all this including those two more logs and we got this too and obviously we have these saplings these leaves too I have a bunch of other leaves too right here. Um, where's the other box? So far, I know I'm not supposed to be using this box and this box for uh, storing leaves, 
but it's fine. It's fine, man. I ran out of shipment boxes. So I'm probably gonna come back here to do more uh, mining off camera in the coming days. But for now, let's get back home and organize this stuff. Okay, I'm back at my home and if you paid attention during the time lapse, you would have known. I got a parrot. Also, if you were here during the live stream, you would have known. I got a parrot. Uh, Peter the Parrot is with us now, our first pet of Season 3, named by Safraid on the live stream. Thanks, Safraid, for sending in the name. I really liked it, which is the reason why I chose Peter. Peter the... The, the Panda and Peter... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Peter Peter the Panda question mark coming soon to Pentagon's house. No, but Peter the Parrot is here. So we are going to use this as a good example to see how I would normally sort uh, my stuff with this um Ito contraption thing in the So I would take my logs and my jungle logs and my oak logs and I would just dedicate a spot for them. So, you might be wondering, well, Phenagon, I got a couple questions, right? What if, let's say you have your log, uh, log, 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 shocker box. There are eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different unique items, David. But there are only five hoppers. How would you refill all of them? Now, the answer to this question is really quite simple. All you need to do is make sure you dedicate some slots in the hoppers for um, for uh, your uh, shocker boxes. So you would start off with, for this chest right here, right? We have oak, right? But it doesn't have to be just oak. We could have acacia right here. We could have mostly acacia, uh, make mostly oak. But then we could have the occasional acacia. And this, as long as we have uh, more than a uh, stack, more than a stack, at least we have some over here, this will never come out. This slot of acacia log will never come out, as long as uh, we have some acacia logs here. Obviously, right now we don't, so that's why I'm going to take this back out. But in the case that we have all the, a lot more logs, we can then do that. So I'm going to place a couple more sticks back here. And I'm also going to place my jungle logs up here. So I need to start wrapping up this video as it's starting to get a little long for me. But I think we want to end it in a special way. A new way I think I'm going to end episodes are we are going to go check out people's bases. Yes, yes, yes. I do this all the time in uh, streams. And some people started wondering if I did them in videos. And I'm like, well, it wouldn't be a bad idea to. So I think every single episode, randomly I will choose a person from the list of whitelisted uh, on the discord and we'll see if we can find our base can't find our base then we'll randomly pick another person so let's pick a person so I have decided just to go to a random tunnel and just go down a random length because I am having huge difficulties Sorting people alphabetically, and also because people are in the roles of offline, online, and then you have helpers and moderators, and pulling all of them alphabetically is too difficult on Discord. So I've just decided to, let's let's just go randomly into one of the four tunnels, and then we'll ask Google a random, uh, I guess, set length. I don't know. Let's see. Okay, I'm here in the east tunnel down 240, 50 blocks approximately. And this is basically where Google told me to go. I mean, I should probably go to this one because it's technically closer, but it doesn't have a name and I really don't want to, uh, what do you call it? Uh, go to a place where I don't even know who, who owns it, right? 
Um, I already checked out that base. Uh, there is no name, so... Yikes. So we're gonna go here. We're gonna go to Zayton's home. Um, first off, nice color palette. Um, I am one to talk about these types of color palettes because from season two, I use dark oak and warp wood a lot in color palettes, especially for my base. So the fact that this person uses something very similar, um, they added white concrete and oak to the color palette, which I think are fine. It works very well here, I think. But uh, a little bit of feedback. I think you, Satan, you could probably use different type of, um, different type of, I guess, plan. Like, it doesn't have to be all blueberries. Okay, so what do we have here? We have a cave spider farm, okay. Uh, down to the Asian debris farm. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I didn't read that sign. Oops. And Satan's main base. I think we'll start in the main base first. Let, let's check this out. And BAM! Okay, the color palette continues and is extended with copper. Now, if copper was in 1.16, I would have definitely used it in my season 2 base. Yes, look, th what is that plane called? Small drip leaf. I think you could use some of those in your tunnel. Um, if it can. I don't even know if it can be placed in the matter. But this is a nice area. There's a couple amethyst buds. It's a nice area. Nice rock formation here. It's almost like a, it's almost like a mini, I guess, geo. Like, it's like those baby geodes. It's like, it's like, not a geode yet, because it's too young, I guess. I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about, but it's, it's, it's interesting. We come up these stairs, oh man. This space is giving me my, you know what this space is giving me? I don't know why, but this space is giving me vibes of my season 2 base. I think it's because of the color palette and the fact that inspired by these Jap Japanese like the Asian architecture in general with the like pagoda right this is a pagoda right here if I'm not correct right the, especially the roofs right the roofs on on these builds oh man that that wow that looks good. I have to applaud you for this one. This, that, that looks good, okay. But we're gonna first check out this. So we got wheat and potato carrot fields, okay. That, that's good, right? You always need some food around here. Is there any interiors? No, there's no interiors. So this is the time where I am going to step out and we're gonna start to take a good look at this area in general. Okay, yeah, so I, I really like the fields. Gives that like kind of rural vibe, and at the same time, these pagodas. I can um, I can just imagine what this will look like with all the copper oxides. I I already know what's going. It's gonna look good. Okay, my recording just cut out because I ran out of this space. But back to what I was saying. Um, I think that if I had the chance to rebuild my season two base, um. I would definitely use copper uh, now, but obviously those days are over. Um, back then I used prismarine because copper wasn't out yet, and I think prismarine does a great job with these blocks. So Zayden, if you want to, if you want some suggestions for your build, maybe a little bit more variation on the roof, I would suggest prismarine. I know it's a bit hard to obtain at this time of the season. So, for your future builds, I would suggest putting some prismarine. Um, I think it works very well with these two blocks. Okay, what is this? This is like a nice horse stable. But still, that, this Japanese, not, not exactly, I don't know, it's a Japanese, Chinese, basically Asian roof style. Um, I, I like this pagoda. So, I understand now why they use white concrete, why is they use white concrete. And these little, like, stilts or whatever they're called with the roofing is, like, so 
I, I don't know how to describe it, but it's so good. It's such a wonderful detail that you can see in real life uh, in uh, Asian architecture. And I, I, I really like it. Um, yeah, I, I really like that. I really like the, the, he's like kind of this roof, roofing. I don't know what exactly they call it, but I really like that. Um, yeah. I am really impressed so far. What I've seen from the city. Very, very impressed. Okay, so I can tell you there's some other things that could use some work. This is a little too much red over here. Um, it's a little too much of the same flower too. Let's look at this. So the main thing I like about this build right here is not only the tall pagoda, but it's also the structure, the foundation that it was built upon. Now the wall, as you can see, is not very varied, but I think that's fine. In this example, we don't want too much detail on the wall, and I think Zan really did it did it well, making sure she didn't put enough or her she or I don't know if it's he or she. I think it's a she. Um, I'm just gonna say she for now. Uh, I'm sorry if if it's it's a he. Um, but I think that it's the right amount of detail for this type of build because you don't really want them to be focusing on the, the very the text very textured wall like the wall is detailed enough that it's good it's at that perfect state very nice very nice also using quartz smooth quartz uh with white concrete uh-huh i like it i don't know what else i can say i really really like it um uh, Okay, so what do we got here? We got a storage system. Okay, so this looks like the main base area, basically. The main build building. We got livestock down here. Pretty sure that's temporary. Yeah. Is she online? No, not online, but amazing job. Amazing job. I know at this point of the season, it's still quite early. I, I shouldn't be expecting too much, but like... This definitely was these two buildings alone exceeded my expectations by like a long shot. Um, wow. And then you got this small little hut here. Still that style. This looks like where the starter base could have been, right? I don't know. This kind of looks like the starter base. Yep. Zayton starter base designed by uh oh. Designed by someone else? Oh no, no, no! About to say! You're doing such a great job, and too, I heard that this was not your creativity and not made from your own mind. Please don't tell me that these two are made by someone else. <laughs> because that would be such a shame. I hope that that was just like your your building inspiration, right? You used that, you used that starter base as inspiration for these two. I hope, I genuinely hope that these two are original. Because they look so great. <clears throat> Otherwise, I think this place is looking pretty good. I mean, I can't really expect more like a better landscape because it's quite early on. But if there was a few things I could, a few things I could say, consider Prismarine and consider not having like these rows of flowers, the same thing, like the same I, I, I think you understand. Basically, these flowers are a little too much excess, too much red, and too much in the same spot. Horse stable looks like it's being worked on. It looks pretty nice, too. It looks like it's a little bit more simplistic. And overall, I, I think this is a really good base. So, if you have the time, viewers, and you're not date, uh, Zayton, I would check this place out. Uh, especially if you're going for that uh, Asian architecture. I will say that it is overall, the idea is there, the execution is there, I can see the idea, I can see the execution, and I think you are going to make a very, very wonderful base. See, I said visitors are welcome, I came, and ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be it from me today, because the episode needs to get out now, literally now, 
Uh, so I'm gonna get it working with editing very quickly, and hopefully, this video will be out on Monday, uh, first of twenty, uh, January twenty-first, uh, twenty-fourth. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know we haven't done anything really exciting this episode. I said we were gonna do something exciting, really, really exciting last episode. And I underestimated how much planning and designing I still have left in creative and a lot more thinking in general. A lot of these plans require a lot of thinking. And um, yeah, this episode was made uh, fairly quickly, not really. But I hope you guys enjoyed it nevertheless. And I'll see you guys next time.